This is the newest computer in my studio, and it's also one of the most useful. It's not fast, it doesn't have the latest hardware, it doesn't even have a graphics card, but it does host a VPN, an ad blocker, SMB file shares, a Jellyfin media server, keeps my dynamic DNS up to date, and it measures only 20 by 18 by 30 centimeters. And best of all, you can make one too. And I hope you do, because this was quite the endeavor to not make it look like total shit while being actually functional. And I took specific care for this to both be relatively easy to print, because it can fit on the bed of most popular FFF printers, and even though it does have a few larger overhangs in the frame pieces, I don't think it's gonna be too much of an issue with most, even mildly modern, printers. So with that, let's look at how I actually made the thing. Also, look at my beautiful new intro and accidental trans flag lighting. This wasn't intentional, but it looks nice, so whatever. I just want to quickly talk about the parts I chose for this build, which should give a bit of rationale to certain choices which may seem a little unorthodox on the surface. First off, you may be wondering why I would design this to accommodate a full-sized ATX power supply rather than an SFX-sized model. Part of what I wanted to accomplish for this project was to make it with almost entirely parts I had on hand. I've got plenty of full-sized ATX power supplies, but I don't have any SFX sizes. I'm cheap, and I was hoping for this project to be cheap as well. And generally, ATX power supplies are just less expensive and more common. And when I'm using such an old motherboard, it just doesn't make sense to go out and buy a $100 power supply for a 13-year-old board. Next, the choice of 2.5-inch hard drives is also a little bit odd but my reason here was essentially also just that I have a lot of them. But I also wanted to be able to fit a full six drives in here to be able to use all the SATA ports I had available on my motherboard. If I had used full-size three and a half inch hard drives, I just could not have gotten this footprint without a lot of maneuvering and annoyance. On top of that, the basement would have had to be over an inch taller, and that wouldn't have made it fit on my shelves very nicely or just be this nice compact nature. And while the extra capacity could have been nice, honestly, this NAS is mostly going to host some basic pieces of media and make it easier to transfer my scripts from my computer to the surface I use for a teleprompter and also some Linux ISOs. I know that's usually a joke about building a big fancy NAS just to keep Linux ISOs on it, but in this case, it's actually true. Because I seem to distro hop either weekly or monthly depending on what kind of chaotic evil mood I'm feeling. And eventually, I'd like to add a Pixie boot server to this so I don't have to etch a new flash drive all the time. Another thing that you can really chalk up to just what I have around is my choice of an old Ivy Bridge motherboard. It only has two slots for RAM, and it doesn't have an NVMe drive slot. But it's the only mini ITX motherboard I have on hand. It has integrated graphics, which is good because I did not include a graphics card slot for here. That, that once again would have taken up extra space that I'm just not bothering with. And it just doesn't need to be powerful. If I had higher capacity drives, it would matter more, but it just doesn't. ZFS is relatively efficient when you have low capacity drives like this, and it just doesn't end up being a problem to have a slow old computer for it. Which is also nice if you're planning to build one of these. Old mini ITX motherboards are relatively inexpensive on eBay as my first little challenge turned out to be the cutout for the IO shield, which sounds really silly. But I don't have an I.O. shield that actually goes with the motherboard I'm using. And none of the other ones that I have left over from boards from the motherboard wall fit on this specific model. But I didn't want to mess it up because this is a big print that would waste a lot of time and material if it gets all messed up from my poor design choices. So I used another smaller uh, non-ITX motherboard, took some measurements, and came up with this little test piece. The I.O. shield did fit on this little test print, so that was a good start, but the mounting points for the motherboard were just a little bit off. I later realized that the problem causing this is just my calipers 
are fun. But luckily, user Venuaunin, not sure I am saying that right, over on Reddit, posted PDFs of several different motherboard hole patterns on the small form factor PC subreddit. From there, it was pretty easy converting the PDF to a DXF file, which Fusion could understand. After that, for the next few weeks, it was relatively smooth sailing with the rest of 3D modeling. This whole case is passively cooled. And this is mostly just for noise reasons, because it runs all the time in a room that I sleep in and I don't want a bunch of fans going all the time. So my solution was this nice open lattice structure. I've always liked Veroni lattices because they've never felt boring or the same. And as a bonus, I found an add-on for Fusion that builds generating them in directly to sketches. Thing that I love about the Veroni lattice side panels is that nothing feels the same or repetitive. And with something like hexagons, the lack of symmetry in certain places if you don't line things up just perfectly right makes things feel off. The asymmetry of Veroni lattices feel like part of the design, because they are. And while I did manage to significantly reduce the amount of supports by using Prusa Slicer's auto-painting feature, each one of these three sections took on average 10 hours, or in Ender 3 land, an entire day. So I hope you aren't trying to make this on an Ender 3 it probably wouldn't go that well anyway. But needless to say, I was pretty relieved when all the parts came out as they were supposed to, and I could get the incredibly satisfying job of removing all the supports. And because the main structural parts are all printed in PETG, and in just these little columns rather than a fully filled in area, these just made an extra wonderful noise. After that, I attached all but two of the holes together with the zip ties, which, while they are a bit of a tight fit, are absolutely perfectly aligned the pieces together. The last two zip ties I left off because they also hold the hard drives in. So this essentially left me with a blank structure that I can now kind of build a computer in. The first thing I added to the case was my drives. Each one has to be screwed into the plate first because the whole assembly has to be zip tied onto the rest of the case. Also, don't mind this innocent writing here on these hard drives. These were acquired legitimately because I bought them at the hard drive store. Does that sound believable? I can now screw in the motherboard. I opted to just do this directly into the printed parts, but if you want a bit of extra strength or feel like you need to swap out your motherboard more often, you can add some threaded heat set inserts. But I felt mine was secure enough without them, and I'm also lazy and cheap. Now it's time to put in the power supply. I'm using a semi-modular PSU to not make a huge mess of wires, especially when the power button has to go right in front of the connectors on it. I'll route the cables as nicely as I can through the holes and plug them into the motherboard. Now I can slot in the RAM. Unfortunately, I only have 4 gig DDR3 sticks, so I'll have to put up with 8 gigs of RAM. But I don't think this will be too bad because of my relatively low drive capacity. Then I could plug in my SATA data and power cables into my drives. So at this point, we basically have a computer, but it doesn't really look that great. While this open nature may be super nice for airflow, I think it's time for some side panels. Oh, and it doesn't have any bottom or feet. So let's do that now. And now we have some nice Veroni lattice pattern side panels, both fully open and solid, but with a fake pattern. And the nice thing about the solid variations is they're just colored with filament changes, meaning you don't need a multicolor capable printer to make these. Or, alternatively, you could always print it just as one piece, but you don't really see the lattice as nicely then. I started off with the feet bottom combo piece, and to make sure it was aligned correctly, I tightened the screws just enough so that the corner popped up just about half a millimeter off my desk. By doing this, the screws stuck out just enough so that they found the holes in the frame by themselves. Then I can attach the power button to its side panel, plug it into the motherboard, and use my same little trick to get it aligned onto the casing. Then I just repeated that step for all the other side panels. 
Previously, I've used TrueNAS Core, but this time I'm using TrueNAS Scale because it's Debian-based so it can run Docker containers, whereas Core is FreeBSD-based, so I'd have to use Jails, which is complicated and annoying, and like I said, I'm lazy. Speaking of FreeBSD, you may have noticed something new on my microphone. That's right, it's this lovely new FreeBSD girly sticker, which you too can have for your microphone, laptop, other laptop, other other laptop, iPod, stack of iPods, or stack of iPads. You can show your love for the almighty FreeBSD while allowing me to keep making these videos. But don't take my word for it, just listen to these happy customers. Before FreeBSD girly stickers, I had no life. I had no house, no family, and no one who loved me whatsoever. But now that I have a FreeBSD girly sticker on my laptop, I found a loving husband and five sons named Danny. I owe all of that to Ren and FreeBSD girly stickers. Before I had a FreeBSD girly sticker at all, nobody loved me and I was getting nowhere in the industry. But now I have an unpaid internship here at Diskette Kitchen and I have Ren to thank for that and their beautiful FreeBSD girly stickers. That's right, everybody will love you if you have a FreeBSD girly sticker. So order yours now at store.diskettekitchen.com or at the link at the description. Other than having Grub instead of Boot Zero, Scale's install process is pretty similar to Core. I selected my SSD, it did some fun things, and once it was done, I was able to log onto the interface and get started. Once I was logged into the web interface, the first thing I did was to create a drive pool. This essentially tells TrueNAS what does what and takes care of RAID configuration. Now I can create some data sets and point the shares to them. TrueNAS also won't let you log into the admin account from your file system, so I'll also make a new user account for myself and give it basically all the permissions of the admin account because nobody else is going to have this. Logging in with this account exposed all my shares and I can copy files into them. With that, I'll install the official TailScale, PyHole, and Jellyfin apps, tell them where to put themselves, and finish configuration via each one of their web interfaces. Now I can upload my favorite album to the Jellyfin Music folder, re-index my library, and there it is, the dulcet tones of Lego Island happy roaming. Side note, if you follow me on Instagram, which you totally should, link in the description, you'll know that I actually teased this project over a month ago, but got caught up in printing problems and a whole side quest involving two different orders of Chauvet wash lights, USPS delaying my package for weeks, weird eBay returns, and just life. But it's out now, so I can say I've accomplished something this month. Oh wait, it's next month now. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, and maybe you'll want to make one of these yourself. And if you do, you can find all the project files at the link in the description, and otherwise, maybe consider buying one of my lovely new FreeBSD girly stickers, or just subscribing and sending this to a friend who might like it. Any of those help me keep making these videos and free 3D models. And with that, I will see you later. Oh, goodbye. But don't take my word for it, list kind of a computer case I now I guess. I now I guess. The first thing I added to my case was my drives. Oh. Take two, with different microphone, you can add some heat. Roll the outro now, Jesus. Just screw them. Fasten.